God bless the faithful. This is Sister Liberty. I want to start off by saying how you really are going to need the ears to hear and a heart that is open to what the Spirit of God desires to speak through me. If you are a person, you already disagree with the Word of God, you already have your own opinions in your own two cents, then you have already closed yourself off from what I am about to get into. If you already have inner disagreement, you're not going to be open and you need the ears to hear. Jesus mentions that several times and that's mentioned several times throughout the word of God of him who has ears to hear, let him hear. Meaning those who can hear, yield, yield. Um, take heed, pay attention, draw in a little closer. That's what it means when it says to him who has ears to hear. So I have been wanting to get into the book of Revelation for a long time. Um, I really feel like right now is the season to get into the book of Revelation. I know with the book of Revelation, growing up, it was always known as the end time book and it was said that revelation was a very scary book and so as i was starting off earlier in my faith i was afraid to touch revelation because of the different things that i had heard and i wasn't really mentally prepared to take in what the book talks about now the book of revelation isn't as scary as people had made it seem until i actually read it you know when you actually read Revelation, you get revelation and you get an understanding as to what's actually about to come and the different signs and the different things that are about to unfold. You take that in and your perspective is so different. And so for a long time, I stayed away from Revelation because of what was always said about it. Like, no, that's a scary book. You don't want to read that unless you are at a place to handle what's in it. Because what's in Revelation is different than all the other books of the Bible. Revelation talks about the return of our Lord and our Savior. Revelation talks about the mark of the beast. It talks about the Antichrist. It talks about the great falling away. It talks about the seven different churches mentioned in chapter one that we're going to get into. It talks about the lake of fire. It talks about all of those that are not going to be written in the book of life. It talks about the tree of life. It talks about the new Jerusalem and all the different kinds of stones that are going to be on the, on, on the foundation. Um, it talks about the 24 elders. It talks about the four living creatures that are before the, the throne. It talks about so many things. And so I can understand why people made such a big deal out of the book of Revelation. Because you really do have to have a heart open to, to receive and to understand what it's talking about. It talks about the new earth and how God is going to be with us and we're going to see him as he is. It talks about how there's not going to be a day. There's not going to be a night. You're not going to have a need for the sun. You're not going to have a need for the moon. God is going to be the light. We're going to worship him. It talks about so many different things. And so I believe that the Lord has given me grace to get into this, this in this season. So it starts off with John. John was a disciple of Jesus Christ and he was one who was known to be the one that Jesus loved, the disciple that Jesus loved. Now, John did not die like the rest of the other disciples. John died from old age. At this point, John was on the island of Patmos. And as he was, you know, there for his faith and he was persecuted, the Lord began to give him this revelation. He gave him this revelation and he told him to write certain things in this book to give to the sons of God. And so it starts off with John talking about the seven churches. So I'll jump down to verse four. And this is chapter one. I'm thinking about just starting the whole chapter. Let's just do that. Let's just start the whole chapter since this is talking about the book of Revelation. So verse one says the revelation of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is revelation. He is the revelation. Things that are the mysteries of God abides in Jesus Christ, the only begotten son. So it says, 
says, which God gave unto him, which is Jesus Christ, to show him or to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So again, John was a servant of Jesus Christ. He was a disciple of Jesus Christ who also bore record of the word of God. He walked with Jesus. He walked with the living word and of the testimonies of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads and that hears the words of this prophecy. You are blessed when you keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. That sounds familiar to what John the Baptist said. The time is at hand. The book of Revelation is a book of preparation. It tells us what's about to happen. And some things in Revelation has already begun to occur. So he says the time is at hand. What does that mean? That means the time of the return of our Savior is drawing near. That means we do, we do not have as much time as we think we have. You know, it's like a, a time sensitive kind of season. It's time sensitive. We don't have as much time as we think that we do. And so for the sons of God, that means we must be prepared. Jesus says to watch and pray. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Again, you're going to need ears to hear because some of the things that I'm going to be reading in Revelation is going to sound strange. It's going to sound strange. It's going to sound weird. It's going to sound different. And if you are not open, then you're going to miss what the book of Re Revelation is talking about. And whatever revelation the Lord decides to reveal during this Bible study, you're going to miss it. So you, you need a heart that is open. Okay, there are seven spirits before the throne of God. Let's keep going. It says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness... And the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. We know that it was the blood of Jesus that washed us and redeemed us from the curses of sin. It says this here in verse 6, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. So what it's saying is before Jesus Christ, because of sin, man had been separated from God. And back in the Old Testament, the only way for man to either be, you know, to even be reconciled back to the Father, they had to offer up sacrifices. But not anybody could just offer up a lamb or, you know, an ox or anything like that. They had to actually go to a priest. They had to go to the high priest and the priest had to offer up the sacrifices. And so... After some time, the sacrifices just were not enough. They were not enough. And so God had to come up with the ultimate plan, which was sending his only begotten son as the ultimate sacrifice so that you and I can be better reconciled with God. And so Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. He took our shame. He took our iniquity. He took everything that you and I took on as far as sin, he bore that on the cross. He never sinned, but he took that on and he died as if he did sin. And so his blood was sufficient enough. The word of God says that it pleased the father to bruise his son for you and I. Like that satisfied God. That was enough. That completed the law. That fulfilled the law. That's why Jesus said when he was on the cross that it was finished. It's done. Hey, it's done. Your sins, they are under the blood. They are erased. You are forgiven. And so this is why he can say now that we are kings and priests. So I don't have to go to anyone to get to the father. I have to go through Jesus because Jesus says that no man goes to the father, but through him. But I don't have to go to a high priest because he calls us high priests. He calls us kings. And so we can go to the father ourselves. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him. You know, it's funny how they're talking about all of these different types of people who are confessing to be Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, one guy, I forget where he's from, but I saw the article like two weeks ago and I looked at it because I'm like, this is a joke. This is a joke. Like you're 60 something years old. You don't have any holes in your hands and you're telling people that you're the Christ. And I giggled because... This is the kind of stuff that Jesus said was going to happen. He said that in the last days, 
Many false prophets, many false Christs are going to rise. I'm trying to think where that guy was from. It was like another country. What was it? I can't think of it. But anyways, to make that long story short, this guy confesses to be Jesus Christ um, where he is. He has a good amount of numbers of followers. People were beginning to call what he was doing a cult or whatnot. And he had people praying to him. And then eventually some stuff ended up happening to where he went to jail. And he's still in jail at the moment. But a lot of his followers believe that it's the end times for them because he said that he was going to be persecuted. So I sell that to say that we have to be careful and this is why we have to be vigilant because Jesus said that every eye will see him when he comes back. Just like you can see the sun. It doesn't matter what part of the United States that you're in. If the sun normally rises on the East Coast around this time, then everybody is going to see the sun. You're not going to be, you know, on the North part of the East Coast and on the West part of the, you know, not the West part, but the South part of the West Coast. And I see the sun rising. And you don't see the sun rising. No, you're going to see it. And so just as you see the sun, every eye is going to see Jesus. So he's not going to come in secret. He's not going to come in private. He's not going to just come over here. No, when he comes, everybody is going to see him. And it says, and they also, which pierced him, meaning those that crucify him. There are still people that are crucifying Christ, although he's risen. When we reject God, when we make decisions to live a lifestyle of sin, that is us crucifying the Lord. And so it says that even those that did not believe that he was the Christ, because even some of the Jews to this day, they still believe that the Messiah has not come. And they're still looking for the Messiah. They did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah because he came, he came as a humble, poor man. And he didn't come riding on a stallion. No, he rode on a donkey. He rode on a donkey. He was a son of a carpenter and his mother was Mary. And so nothing about him, nothing about him said, hey, I'm the Christ. Nothing about him said, hey, follow me. It was the words that he spoke that drew people in that had the ears to hear and a heart that was open. So Jesus didn't come with a royal gown and a crown and, and you know, rings and bracelets he didn't come like that and so most still believe that the messiah has not yet come but he says that even those which pierced him they're gonna see him they're gonna see him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so amen he says this here in red letter words i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end that means he's the first in the line the last that means there is nobody else that's gonna come after him like that's it he's the completion of light says the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. What's so amazing is Jesus has many names. You know how they say, well, Jesus isn't his only name. You know, that's the slave master name. Jesus has many names. He's called the Amen. He's called the Savior. He's called the Lamb of God. He's called the Bread of Life. He's called the Mediator. He's called the Counselor. He's called the Almighty. He's called Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, true and faithful, the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead. He has so many names. I can keep going. He has so many names. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the island that is called Patmos. So as I said, John is on a deserted island by himself. This is why he is in position to actually take on what God wants to give him. He's in an island for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Persecution. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I'm getting chills right now just thinking about this. He says, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So it's been said that Jesus' voice sounds like trumpet, sounds like many waters. It doesn't sound like something that you would have ever heard before. It says this. So the voice said, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see write in a book and send it onto the seven churches, which are in Asia. You have Ephesus, you have Smyrna, you have Pergamos, you have Thyatira, you have Sardis, 
You have Philadelphia and you have Laodicea. It says, and I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. So John is trying to like <laughs> get himself together. He's trying to get himself together. So he turned and the moment he turned back to hear the voice, it said that he saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, he says that there was a light unto one, the son of man, clothed with garments down to his foot. One of the things that I consider is what's happening in heaven looks different than what's happening in earth. Meaning we've gone so far away from the ancient things, meaning people in heaven are not walking around with shorts and J's on their feet and Nikes and denim jeans and halter tops. No, they're walking around with, with garments. They're walking around with the long robes, the white robes, just like how they did years ago. And so things in heaven still are operating that way. It says that he was clothed with a garment down to his foot and girded about the path with a golden girdle. So that's a, that's right here. That's this area right here. It says that he was girded about with a golden girdle. And it says this. This is where most people misunderstand Revelation. You know, those who like to say that Jesus was a black man. It says this here. We have to make sure that we're reading and that we're understanding. His head, which is this, and his hairs were white. So I want to stop there. We're white. And we know what the color white is. We know that it's not black. We know that it's not gray. We know that it's not blue. But it's a bold, pure color. It says his head and his hairs were white, like wool. It didn't say that his hair was wool. We A lot of people misinterpret that passage of scripture. And they take it out of context and they say, no, Jesus had hair like wool. No. It says white like wool. If you've ever seen wool, it's white. So we don't want to put our own stamp of what we believe the word of God is saying. We need to take the word of God for what it is and what it is saying. It says that Jesus had not just his hair, his head and his hairs was white like wool. So let's not misunderstand that. It says as white as snow, just to go back and clarify what he's saying. I'm saying that his hair was white. Like what? Like snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass. This is where most people like to say, well, you see, I told you he was black. No. Jesus, what this is saying is that he's gone some places. He's gone through the fire. That's what it's saying. As if they burn in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Many people have described hearing the voice of God as water if you've ever gone to the beach or if you've ever heard just a waterfall and you just sat there there's so much peace in hearing moving water there's so much peace and so the word the, the voice of god the voice of jesus is as many waters it says and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword that means that jesus is a warlord a sword proceeds out of his mouth. That's to devour his enemies. That's what that's for. That's to make war with his enemies. It says, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. So Jesus is light. In him there is no darkness. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. That's all you can do when you encounter something of the heavenly realms. Is respond like that to where you feel like, your whole body is about to disintegrate because when heaven comes down, things change. Things change because God is a consuming fire. And so the fact that John was this close, his body had no choice but to react in this way. And he fell as one dead. And it says this, and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. And Jesus says that multiple times because he wants us to know that there is not going to be another me. He wants us to know that this really is the only begotten of God. This is the one true son. And after him, no one else is coming. This is it. I am he that lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. So for those who say that Jesus did not raise from the dead, you know, those who, you know, pay people to say that his disciples took him away and he really did not rise from the dead. You still have people that believe that to this day. 
They're still keeping that saying going. Oh no, his disciples stole him. He didn't rise, but he's alive. He's alive, which is why we don't we don't represent the dead Jesus on the cross because the God that we serve, the Jesus that we serve, he's risen. He's not on the cross anymore. That's why, you know, the Roman Catholic, that's why that doctrine is so damnable because it, it, it represents that Christ is, is still dead. He's still dead and he's not dead. He's risen. He's risen. He says this, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. So this is why his feet looks like it, it has been burnt in the fire. He had to go to hell and he had to open the prison gates to those that were down there. He got the keys or he has the keys of death and hell. How did he get that? He had to defeat death. He had to go through death and defeat death in order to get those keys. Hey, these keys now belong to me. Why? Because I have defeated you. You no longer have rule over me. You no longer have rule over the children of God. That's why he went and got those that belong to him. He still has the keys. Write these things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars, the stars which you saw in my right hand, are the seven golden candlesticks. And the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So remember the seven churches that I mentioned. Those are what the candle, candlesticks represent. The seven churches. It says, and the seven candlesticks which you saw are the seven churches. So, he has the seven candlesticks. He has the seven churches. And then the, the seven stars which were in Jesus' hands represents the seven angels that are over the seven churches. So, I hope you are following me. I hope it's making sense. I wish I, wish I could just draw it out. I wish I could draw it out. So, that is the end of chapter one. So what we talked about is John being on the island and him getting this revelation. Jesus coming to him and giving him this revelation of what's about to come and what's about to happen. So we already can see that so much is occurring in just chapter one. Jesus Christ is coming back. It says that every eye is going to see him. He's going to come with the clouds. It says that he has a sword coming out of his mouth and it gave us one of the descriptions of his appearance. It says he is as the sun. His head and his hair are white like wool. His feet are like unto a fine brass and he is girded about with a golden girdle right here. So it almost sounds like he has an armor on. But that is it for right now may the spirit of god may he give you the ears to hear and the understanding so that you can receive what he is saying in this season for your life in jesus name